Hey, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, and you have arrived at Streaming Idiots. <laughs> so obviously you took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> Delighted to have you with us. For those folks that are watching live and filling up the chat room, we're, I'm, I'm so excited to have you with us today. If you're watching us directly on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you want to come on over to eastershorebroadcasting.com because that's where the chat is. We're not going to be monitoring the, the, the comments on Facebook or, or the chat in YouTube. Come on, let's get everybody on the same page. We can all chat together. You know, let's let's do it. It'll be a lot more fun that way. So come on in and watch us at uh, eastershorebroadcasting.com. Click watch live and that'll take you right to it. Uh, one of the, uh, so I see Carl's here. Welcome, Carl. Carl doesn't always make it for the live show. Glad to have you. Um, really excited about today's show. We're, last week, we talked about how to add a Zoom or Skype guest to a vMix production from the same PC. And, and for some folks, that was kind of a new concept. Uh, for other folks, it was like, uh, you know, is there, is there another way? Well, yes, there is another way. You can add a Zoom guest or a Skype guest from a second PC, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I want to apologize in advance if my, if my PowerPoint slides are not spot on. Um, ran out of time, was trying to, you know how it is when you've got a bunch of slides and you're trying to get them in a certain order, and then all of a sudden you realize, you know, that's not a very logical, anyway, that's my problem, not yours. Um, so if you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube directly, come on over to easternshorebroadcasting.com and click Watch Live. A um, couple announcements before we start. Um, shout out to our upcoming new community, I guess we're going to call it, uh, Live Streaming Rookies. Live Streaming Rookies is a closed group that will have a regular weekly live show. We'll have coaches available. We'll have a buyer club. Uh, we'll have all sorts of goodies, uh, and you have to pay to join. It's a membership subs subscription, and we'll have more information about that uh, in the next week or two. We're, we're, we're trying to get that off the ground by the end of the month. Um, also really excited because later today or tomorrow, we will be including in the Eastern Shore Broadcasting store uh, the Emerald class of uh, PCs. That's the vMix Emerald uh, reference PC. And we have that, it, in, even though it's emerald, it still has several flavors. So we have a flavor for, for talk shows and a flavor for churches. Actually, we've got two flavors for talk shows. So you want to take a look at that. And if you're in the market for a PC, these will be quick ship. I mean, that is, if, if yours goes down today and you need one tomorrow, if you tell us today, we can have it to you tomorrow. It'll be that quick. That's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, I know. The last three weeks, we have been suffering from bad connections on our internet. We would just be cruising on along, and then all of a sudden, the internet would just peter out. And we think, we think this week we have it fixed. I'm keeping an eye on the uh, stream health over there on the YouTube uh, live page on the monitor to make sure that we're not having anything. And if you're watching us live on chat and you all of a sudden see some buffering, if you would put that in caps, you know, buffering right there, and I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye out for it. But I'm hoping that's not the case. We had techs out yesterday, techs out today, a flurry of technical activity, and uh, they've given us all new hamsters. So we should be ready to go, ready to go. Okay, now, the, uh, the, the tutorial today is how to add a Skype or Zoom guest. I happen to prefer Zoom because I have better luck with it in terms of video and audio. How to add a Zoom guest to a vMix production like this one from a separate PC. Now, actually, I've got my good old laptop back here that's streaming and recording today. 
And I've got in a closet nearby two other older PCs that I use as my Zoom and Skype PCs. So when I do a remote production where I'm not part of the production, but I have a host and a guest, I bring each of them in on a separate PC so that I've got a separate, uh, separate window for them, separate, separate capture for them that's just their video, just their audio. And we're going to show you how to do that with one second PC today. So if... Uh, I need to get a drum roll. Drum, imagine a drum roll for just a second, okay? So we're going we're gonna to add, add a Zoom guest in vMix on a second PC. Now, don't worry about taking notes because you can watch this again later. And forgive me in advance <laughs> if the slides are a little bit out of, out of sequence. Um, but the idea is with this that there, there are certain... There are certain parts about it that are really easy. This is a little bit of a recap of last week, but we're going to go through it all again because it might be the first time. Um, the, the, the video part is really pretty simple. It really is. Video is like video. You know, the, the hardest part of video sometimes is making my hand appear in front of this instead of behind it. Um, anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. It's the audio part of it that can be so complicated, confusing, confounding, all of that, all of, all of the above. But if, if you take your time and you map it out like you, a road map, pretend like the audio is, is a road and you got to get from Topeka, Kansas to Fairhope, Alabama. You got you to go all through all the connections on that road and that's the audio part. So, but Here's the groundwork. We have to start with what we need. What we need is, of course, we need vMix on two, two PCs. You can download vMix, uh, the free download, vMix.com, and that will get you a 60-day trial of the professional-level software. That's the $1,200 version you get for free for six months. No, no watermarks, no voiceovers or anything like that. Um, it's, it's there, you can use it, and then when you're done, it'll revert back to the standard definition version that's really crippled, it's limited to four inputs, but at least, at least you've got something. Or you can buy it from somebody like me, a reseller for, for Munich at eastershorebroadcasting.com. How about that for a little in-process plug? <laughs> you also need Zoom. In this case, you only need Zoom on the second PC. You don't need it on the main PC because you're not going to be using it on the main PC. Um, you also need some helpers and the helpers come in, in the form of what I would call a virtual audio cable software app kind of thing. Now there's one from a company called Virtual Audio Cables and I don't know if you can make out the whole thing right there, but you can come back and copy it down and that, um, yeah, did I say six months? I meant 60 days. Sorry. It's a 60 day trial, not a six month trial. <laughs> Guys at vMix are going to cut me off if I keep doing that. Uh, at Virtual Audio Cables, you get two audio cables for 25 bucks. That, that is, you get cable line one and cable line two for 25 bucks. That's, that's it. That's all you get. And that's okay. That's all you need, at least in this example. Um, the other place you can go is virtual is VB Audio Virtual Cable, and that's donationware. And I think you can make a donation of, you know, five, ten dollars. And, and let me back up. I misspoke. With virtual audio cables for twenty-five dollars, you get sixteen cables. You only need two, but you get sixteen for twenty-five. And there might be some times if you're bringing in two guests from two PCs that you would need more than more than two. Virtual audio, uh, VB audio cable, you get two cables for a donation. Five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you think is best. Okay. So you got the groundwork. That's all the stuff you need. Oh, and you need the PCs too, of course. We got to prepare. This may be slightly out of order, so 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 hang with me. Um, somebody in the chat says you think they think you get over two hundred virtual audio cables. So if you have some extras, you can send them to me, um, and I'll I'll give them out to people that don't have any. Let's let's start off by preparing your PC first. Uh, let's prepare the second PC first. And we're going to do that by starting Zoom and then going into the settings in Zoom. And this is on the second PC now. This is the audio part now. This is the hard part. So you got to stand up and pay, sit up and pay attention. You want to set the mic 
for your virtual audio cable line one and the speaker for your virtual cable audio line two. Now this of course assumes that you already have your virtual audio cables installed on your second PC. So go ahead and get those done on there. And in Zoom, you want to go ahead and let's just set it up. We already know what they are. We've already made out our roadmap. We know that the mic in Zoom, that is our audio going to our guest, will go over channel VAC line one. And the guest's audio coming to us on the second PC, of course, will be on, on line two. Second PC, audio, vMix. This is the vMix separate desktop capture app. Um, I think when you download vMix now, the desktop capture app comes with it. It didn't used to, uh, but double check me on that. I think it, it might still be a separate download, but I'm not sure. Anyway, in the de and I'll come back and clarify in the show notes on that one. In the desktop capture app, you want to go to settings, you want to go to audio source, and you want to set the audio source for VAC Line 2. Because VAC Line 2 is attached to the Zoom speakers. So we're going to connect the Zoom speakers to VAC Line 2, and then we're going to take VAC Line 2 to the audio source in the vMix desktop capture app. So now we're capturing that audio from Zoom and making it available in this desktop capture app. All right, so hang with me on this one. All right, now let's go prepare our main PC. We're going to come back in just a minute. We're going to put it all together. But we're preparing our main PC now. In vMix, we want to go to settings. There is a setting there called external output slash NDI. I think I have a picture of it here. Yeah, there we go. And let's, let's make that go full screen. And you can see where I circled so elegantly in red down there that we want to check the little checkbox for recording slash external slash output. That means that we're now making available over NDI, which means it's available over our network to something else that has vMix on the other end. Anything from our PC that is recording, is extern external, or is output. All right, so let's come back to me here. And don't, don't you love that little merge transition? I love that merge transition. I like to use it whenever I can. All right, main PC, audio, the vMix audio output settings. So that's going into settings. I think I've got a picture of it here. Yeah, there we go. I am so good with the pictures today. All right, you're going into settings, you're going into audio outputs, and you want to set your apps, and this is my way. You can adapt it for your way as needed. Uh, a is for your PC speakers or your headphones. That's how I'm using my A channel, is so that I can monitor the audio this way. B is going to be virtual audio cable line two. Virtual audio cable line two. So that is any audio that I want my guests to hear on the second PC in Zoom. I'm going to make sure that the B channel is always selected on that audio input. And if I want to hear it, it, the A channel needs to be selected. So, for example, I'm not going to select my own audio um, for A, and I'm not going to select, uh, if I'm sending audio back to Zoom, I'm not going to select the B input for that one. All right, so let's, let's move on. Hold your questions to the end. <laughs> on the main PC, the audio in vMix, we want to add an input, and it's an audio input, and we want to assign that input to VAC line one. All right, this is the same as last week, so this is a kind of a retread material at this point. So, a little review here of our vMix audio buses. The, the master, um, and let's see, we had, or there it is, we'll go back to this one. The master here, is what everybody hears. Headphones, we're not going to pay any attention to. And then the, the B, the A channel, is going to be what I hear. Whoops, there it is. Or what, what is available in the speakers that are attached to my main PC. I don't like to use speakers because you get feedback on, on the mics. And then the B goes out to the second PC for Zoom. And you can see that we've got our our settings here 
from Zoom. We've got A selected so that I can hear it and M selected so that you can hear it. And then whatever's coming out of my PC, which in this case is the audio mains, is going to M, which means it's going to you, and then it's going to B, which means it's going to the remote PC. All right, now, now that we've got the groundwork laid, we know what our stuff is, we've prepared our second PC, we've prepared our, our first PC, now let's put it all together. And I'm gonna have a talk with some of you guys that are misbehaving there in the chat room. We just, we're just not gonna have that. <laughs> all right, on the second PC, we're going, to, we're going to start with the audio, so start vMix, add an input, and that input is going to be a, an NDI input from the main PC, and it'll simply be the output of the main PC. And I think I may have this out of order. Uh, let's, let's advance one slide. Two slides. Nope. I may have left out a step. I think you need to turn on the, um, you need to turn on the external on the second PC. Yeah, I'll, I'll correct that in the show notes and I may come back and edit at this. I may have taken that out because it wasn't necessary at this point. Uh, so you want to start vMix on the second PC, add an input, which is an NDI input and it's and you're looking for the categories of your main PC and in the category of your main PC one of them will be labeled output. You also want to add a second input in the category of your NDI main PC and that one's going to be labeled vMix audio bus B. And and so we've made that available bus B. On the main PC, the video we're going to add an input, an NDI capture. We're going to capture the second PC, whatever the name of that is. We're going to capture the window that is the Zoom meeting. So now we have captured everything. Everything is together. Everything, at least all the piece parts are together and cooperating. If they're not, and again, when you test this out, the most common audio problem I find with uh, with, with this is that the guest doesn't have their microphone or their speaker set right. And so they'll be talking. And they, they'll say they can't hear you, but they haven't set up Zoom correctly. So we need to do a Zoom tutorial at some point. Um, okay, so we're going to do a side-by-side, -side, me and a guest. You've seen that. And we're going to do it my way. So you're going to find a frame. Go out on the Internet. You know, I just Googled, I think, frames, and here was a, just a snapshot of, the, of all the different frames that were available. I happen to like, what frame is it in this picture? I think it's the top left frame. I think that's the one I used. And I played around with it. I talked to somebody earlier this week and played around, made it a little transparent. I hope that'll show up. You want to duplicate those frames so now that you have them side by side. And you would do that in Photoshop or, in my case, Paintbrush Pro. Um, paintbrush? Yeah, that's it, Paintbrush. And one of the things that I did today was I took this frame and I decreased the opacity of it to about 75%, so it was slightly transparent. Um, if you watch the news shows, you'll notice that sometimes the frames look like they have kind of a beveled edge to them because you can kind of see the... You can see whatever's going on, what, whoever the speakers are. You can kind of see them in the frames. And so I tried to do that today. We'll see if that's it. Um, Paint Shop Pro, says Giles. Thank you very much. Um, and then we want to add titles to the bottom. And then we can add a video background. In this case, it's a moving background. So... Uh, Let's see, I'll, I'll bring it in so you can see this is what it, this is what it looks like. And it just is a 15-second a clip that uh, just sort of repeats itself. And I have it set on um, loop. So it's just a little interesting background going on there. Um, and then we put it all together in a multi-view. And, and this shot is a shot that uh, uh, Tom Boudreaux and I worked on earlier. And Tommy, Tommy helped me too, but I couldn't get the 
aspect ratio perfectly on Tommy. So, so Tom was able to call in. And you see, you can see in this photo, you can see the frames, you can see my image, you can see Tom's image. And so at this point, what I wanted to do was crop Tom's image so that it fit nicely in the frame. And you can't really see from that, although you will see the next time I have a guest on, that the, uh, the frame is, uh, is now semi-transparent, and so you can see through it. Um, and then it ends up with a, a finished shot that looks like that in the top right-hand side, and you can see the, the guest view in the top left-hand side. Um, a, quick, a quick word about, about dealing with a guest is that, you know, what I realize most of the time when I'm talking with, with somebody, um, a lot of times they're not thinking about how they appear. They're just thinking, oh, I got to get my camera right. I got to get my microphone right. I got to be able to listen. Okay, I got my camera, got my mic, and I can hear everything's good. And they generally forget about two different things. One is they forget about lighting, and lighting is just crucial. Um, if you are poorly lit, Nobody can see you. If you've got a window behind you, or if a light is behind you, if there's, if all you have is an overhead light, it's going to cast shadows on your face. Nobody's going to see you. The second is, depending on how the show is, I happen to like, let me go back to it so you can see it, I happen to like the kind of this upper torso shot from the rib cage up. Um, I, I'm not a big one for just the heads. I, 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 you know, my face is not that pretty that I want just a head shot. Um, I want I want I want a torso shot. And when I was talking with Tom, um, Tommy earlier, uh, you know, Tommy could give me a <laughs> the upper torso shot. Apparently, the bottom of his torso does not exist. Um, so we had to we had to go on to to a next one. So I like to get that kind of rib cage shot up because I think that makes a, a good shot. People can 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 see a little bit more of, of body language and shoulder movement and that kind of thing in that shot. All right, so, so enough preaching on that one. So you've got it all together and, and you've got a look that looks like that. Of course, I, I spent all that time talking about torso shot, but, uh, and, and Gerald and, and I both didn't have the torso look going on there, but uh, that's, the, that's the way it is. And that is it, I ran through it pretty quickly, but that is it on adding a Zoom guest in vMix from a second PC. It's a, it's, it's a little bit more complicated because there's a second PC involved. The same principles are involved, i.e., you got to grab the, uh, the video, you've got to route the audio, and you've got to repeat or you've got to return video and audio to your guest. Now, I'm a big proponent on letting the guest see what the show is. I don't think the guest needs to see themselves. They already know what they look like. You know, if they're afraid their hair needs to be touched up or, or something like that, they should have handled that before they got on the show. Um, they don't need to see me in a separate camera shot that's not part of the production. Uh, what, they, what I really think they need is they need to see what you see when you see the show. They need to see, I think they need to see um, whatever titles might be down there. If there's a video playing or, a, or you're showing a picture, I think they need to see that. Um, they definitely need to see something. Now, you, you do want to caution your guest not to have their monitor out to the side, and so they're constantly looking over to see what they look like and to see what, what you're talking about, to try to have the monitor that, that they can see the show on as close to the camera as possible. Now, Tom Boudreau and I this morning were, 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 were to, sort of looking at how to, how to deal with these kind of things, and, and Tommy and I were looking at those on how to deal with them. And one of the things that we realized was the distance from the camera is important. If you have a, a webcam set up two feet away from you, you're not going to be able to get enough image here to get that, that upper torso shot. Um, it's nice to have the camera with some distance ahead of you. If you've got a green screen, it's also nice to have some distance behind you on the green screen. I've got about five feet between me and the green screen and then about six or seven feet between me and the camera. And that allows me to do a lot of things that I couldn't do if the camera was snugged up on me or if the green screen was snugged up on me. Now I will say, and I see Amnon in the chat, 
that uh, Amnon, I don't know how he does it, but he can put his blue screen about nine inches behind him and gets a great key. And um, just he's, he's been able to do that. I think it has to, something to do with his lighting, but uh, either that or, or his age. <laughs> Perhaps it's the glean off his head. Anyway, just teasing. Sorry about that, Amnon. Poor Amnon. I throw him in front of the bus. He was my very first, uh, very first guest, uh, July 2012, when nobody else would come on the show. So I, I still owe him a debt of gratitude for that. Well, there are the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten basics of getting a Zoom guest into your production from a second PC. And again, the reasons to use a second PC, I think, are because, number one, you don't want to clutter up your desktop here um, because you just, you got so many things, excuse me, you're trying to monitor like a chat room or stream health or uh, audio or the, the production, all those things I'm pointing to because that's what I'm looking at. Um, and then when I bring my guest in, I've, I've got my guest available where I can see him as part of my vMix production. The other is if your, your PC may not be able to handle all that. And so you can offload this to a, a, a laptop, to an older PC. The only qualification that I would make is it has to be able to run NDI. It has to be something that was built, I think, since, uh, what did they say, 2008, um, and have the capacity to, to run NDI. NDI requires certain processes under the scenes that I don't have a clue about. But if it doesn't work, if all you get is a black screen, then your PC is probably not set up for that. I have bumped into some folks uh, that have had some problems getting their computers to talk to each other and see NDI back and forth. Um, sometimes it can be as easy as rebooting the PC. Um, other times I was talking with Ray and, and he had to actually download the driver for his Ethernet port because that, that was where the problem was. And as soon as he updated that driver, that port spoke to the network. Um, if your PCs don't see each other in NDI, Go to the network level and see if they see each other there. If they don't see each other at the network level, they're not going to see each other at the NDI level. Um, so there's that. There's that. Let's see. What have we got? I think we've got it. I think we've got it. I apologize for uh, not being as confident in this. I had intended to sort of walk through this all the way myself and think it through just one more time before I brought it out to you, but I ran out of time. And all these rascals in the chat were just like, where's Tom, where's Tom? And I was like, okay, I guess we have to do a show. Uh, and Amnon is saying again, Tom, after all the years of one man, one PC, you're gonna have a hard time convincing us to use multiple PCs. Well, I'll tell you, once I discovered how easy it was to use multiple PCs, and how sensible it was to offload. Again, I'm not using, I'm not using the nice equipment that I sell. Um, I'm using a second generation i7 processor. So that's the i7-2600. It's the K version, so it's overclocked a little bit. That's my main PC. Um, in the closet, I've got two other uh, of the same era version PCs with uh, just the, the graphics that came on the chip or came on the motherboard. So there's not a lot of power there. And by distributing some of these assignments to various PCs, you can really help yourself out. Now, I will say if you're doing vMix, you absolutely positively want to get the NVIDIA. Um, I'm thinking capture card, but it's not. It's the NVIDIA, NVIDIA video card, uh, a 750 or higher. When I say 750 or higher, I mean like 750 or 950 or 960 or 970, but not 940. Um, so the, the second digit, that, that five, needs to be at least a five, six, seven. Uh, is there an eight? I don't know if there's an eight or not. The, um, in this particular PC that I'm using for this broadcast, it's a 750 um, Ti. The laptop actually here has a, um, I think it's a 960, um, 
and so it's actually got more processing power for the video in this laptop, which is why I use this for streaming and recording because it just it just goes right through that at what what do we have about 22% CPU right now on that one, and I've got uh, 10 or 12 total CPU on this one right here. Um, but I'm not I'm not streaming or recording on this main PC. I'm just processing all the video. Uh, receiving the NDI from this, the remote PC and then through NDI passing it over to the, the laptop PC. So in this case we would be using three PCs and four if we had two guests. Uh, now there will be times where I'll bring in a guest directly on this, this PC and can do that as long as I'm not streaming uh, anything from this PC itself to um, like Periscope, Twitter, something like that, which uh, we're not doing this week because we weren't sure of our internet connection, but it looks like we made it all the way through. Well, we've come to the end of our time, and I, I hate that it's gotten by so soon, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, next week's show is yet to be determined. All right, my favorite subject. And... Um, we will be bringing you that yet-to-be-determined PC probably in wonderful 7, uh, 720p video because uh, apparently we made it all the way through today's show in 720p video, so we're, we're happy about that. Hang around for the, uh, the post show where Gerald has refreshments. He's cooked up some stuff there. And uh, we will see you next week. Um, what else can I say? Uh, I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching. Oh, I know. <laughs> here it is. It's right here in my notes. If you're watching us on YouTube and you made it this far, uh, you definitely need to subscribe. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. We'll send you a notice whenever we're live and whenever we've uploaded a, a video. We won't, we won't annoy you any more than that. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. We'll see you next time.